No, 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 we don't have time. Yeah, we do. That's Wait. wasting time, right? We're there. wasting time. That's like go. That's a hundred gigabytes right there, <laughs> <laughs> or megabytes. We're already two terabytes in. Yes. We're going back. Yeah, there we go. um, so we are the master debaters. I'm J O Stacks. Oh. No, 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 no. You're always second. Oh. Yeah, but I, I did it last time and you got upset. Just because you we, threw a fit. No, but because you no, you always go first. Always him. When he starts off first, it's weird. Okay, try again. Welcome to the Master Debaters Podcast. I am NJ. I'm J.O. Stacks. And I'm Captain Motherfucking Sherrard. We're here with a very special guest today. My uh, my good friend Alex Bent is here. My second cousin, <laughs> Alex Bent. <laughs> uh, second cousin, like sixth removed or something. Sixth times removed. <laughs> and the emptiness yeah. is also here. Yeah. So welcome to the show. I guess should we uh, recap some of the stuff we did in the Facebook live feed? Kind of get people a recap yeah. of uh, reacquainted. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reacquainted yeah. with our special uh, guest here. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you're Alex Benton, in the emptiness. We sh- we should probably start out. We didn't really cover it at all in the live feed. What is the emptiness? Actually, that's a question I wanted to ask until they dropped my mind. You know, I'm just gonna sound real pretentious and stuff, but. Originally, the project was just called The Emptiness, and I didn't want to be known as Alex Bent or anything. I just kind of uh, yeah. liked, liked the way it sounded and stuff, and it, had, I don't know, it kind of just has to do with, like, the void of trying to find your purpose in life, and I feel mm. like that's something I kind of carry with myself quite a bit, um, and then eventually I just kind of tried to rebrand it as Alex Bent in The Emptiness, and in a lot of ways, I think it kind of really explains uh, what I'm doing a lot more, because it's just me up there by myself when I perform, and it's just, the band is... Implies there's a band, but yes. it's just you look up there and there's just emptiness. So, ah, uh, I like that. Yeah, I like so that. It's kind of just like double. Yeah, I don't think that, that sounds pretentious at all, but it yeah. was something I, I, I was genuinely curious about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for the people who don't know you, what uh, what's Alex Bent about? Like, I mean, you kind of answered that a little bit, but like, what is you know the idea of of who you are as an artist? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I try to make. Uh, uh, big sounding music, but still be vulnerable at the same time. Yeah. Um, I think I just mainly connect, I connect with music in a way that I feel like is maybe on a deeper level than maybe like, uh, I don't know, maybe. Big Sean, maybe. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to him recently. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, I want to find people that connect to music the way that I do. Yeah. Um, and that's why I try to make, uh, music that maybe sounds a little more, I guess, accessible in a way, but still maybe touches on subjects and feelings that uh, maybe people who spend a lot of time in the room can <laughs> identify with and stuff. It's not necessarily like good time music, but I think it's, uh, I want to be able to maybe for people to find comfort in what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I don't know. We have a term for that. What is that? Headphone music. Good, yeah, that, that, yeah. We got that yeah, from, from my friend Data Banks. Yeah, okay. yeah, um, we had him on the show and he was kind of explaining... Like he doesn't make music to listen to in the car. He makes headphone music. Yeah, no, I you know? agree with and that. And that's and that's you know me too. And and, and I, I see that yeah. like in your style of music too. It's you know the kind of music you're meant to listen to by yourself almost. Yeah. You know, so you can take in everything and kind of absorb what's being said and and, and all the sounds and, and different things going on. The funny thing is, is that like I don't often I don't talk much. I don't do many interviews. So it's like when it comes time to answer this stuff, it's like. How, what's the best way to word this? Because I know what it means, but yes. I don't know how to say it. And yeah. That mm-hmm. makes that, yeah, you're helping me along. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, no, but that's a, that's a good way of explaining it, I think. And I think yeah, it definitely is head form music. It's just. And uh, how is it? What do you describe your music style again? What was the, the term used? Dark piano pop. Like Dark it's, piano it's, pop. Yeah. It, still kind of refining it. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what, yeah. So you're going to be a pioneer. I guess dark so. Piano yeah, pop. Yeah, yeah, we'll so try. if it was your your iTunes category, if your iTunes or your albums released on iTunes, would it be alternative or dark piano pop? Would it have like one section of iTunes dedicated yeah. to dark piano pop, or would it be like alternative? They'd, they'd probably throw it an alternative yeah, or, or 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 R and B maybe yeah, like pop, yeah, sure. even so yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really suck at genres. I don't know. That's basically why I've made that. <laughs> it's like oh, I can just be a dick and just say it's something that doesn't exist yeah yeah. Like, yeah there's my way out of this answer <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't piss anyone off that way because it's like I can't say like oh, I'm, I'm pop because mm. someone will always have an issue with that yeah. like, oh, like you really aren't pop. folk metal yeah. this is folk metal <laughs> <laughs> post uh, what post core yeah, yeah, yeah. post core that's a bad post one holy yeah, fuck yeah, I fucking hate all those genres see the thing I like about how you're kind of labeling your own genre I 
I assume it doesn't limit your creativity, right? Because you know, I you know there's some artists who are like, you know, I, I do rap. So they try and stay inside that rap box. Yes. So I'm assuming that's something that's helped you with uh, like creating your albums because you don't, you're not limited now. You can just kind of make music as you, you hear it or see yeah, it. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, but also, I mean, I spend a lot of time, like I haven't really done anything publicly in the past like couple of years, I guess, like, mm. since I started making this album. So it's only really been me doing all this stuff. So okay. I, don't know, I don't even know if I even really considered all that. It was just kind of, I listened to a lot of different stuff, and I think that might have been why it was hard for me to understand why certain, uh, like, older fans of my older music didn't really like this stuff. I oh, yeah. Like, oh, I don't get it, because I liked that, and I mm-hmm. also like this, so how could you not like this, too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I I like your older stuff a lot, you know, from what I've heard. Um, you know, Girl Next Door, I like Sadie a lot, but, you know, comparing that to your new stuff, that stuff seems a lot more... Um, I hate to use this word, but I'm gonna use it anyways. It, it does seem a little bit more like on the generic side. Like it yeah. just seems like something that, like I've heard it in other places, kind of. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, okay. Whereas like th- I've I've heard elements of that being used by other artists. Where like your new album, everything feels really new. Like everything feels like I'm being introduced to it for the first time, which is you know really cool. Uh, yeah, thanks. That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool of you to say. So yeah, thanks. I think with the last thing I was doing or whatever, it was just kind of more. Uh, I think I was just trying to make like a summer record and kind of was more influenced by like 90s rock at the time. And I was working with a producer who liked a lot of that stuff, but I, I think I wanted it to sound like more of a mix of what it was and what I'm doing now. Yeah. Kind mm-hmm. of more like a current take on 90s rock, but I don't know. I didn't have maybe the resources to pull it off. That's, <laughs> that's actually like exactly what Run Like Hell is. Yeah, I guess. It's like a current yeah. take on 90s rock. I guess, yeah. I yeah. Mean, I guess, this is cool, by the way, because... Again, it's just spent so much time by myself doing this that I never really hear anyone else's take on yeah. what it is I'm doing. So I, I almost discover more about it based off what other people are saying. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, it's cool. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, kind of switching lanes on the on the music side. Oh, we're switching it. We're switching it up real quick. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, still, <laughs> it still you know, has to do it with you and things like that. Um, it, not so much about the music itself, but like uh, your album title, yeah. Dead in the Water. Like, yeah. where did that come from? Uh, I, don't, I, I, I guess I first heard the term, like, maybe a couple of years ago. Well, I didn't first hear it, but someone said it, and it just kind of got Stuck me... Stuck with thinking, you a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of like, what does that, like, really mean? And I was kind of just thinking about um, where I was in my life, and I was spending kind of a lot of time alone, and would kind of just be in my room just making beats or whatever, or making instrumentals. And I'd put them on my phone and just kind of drive around by myself. And just, it was a lot of, I guess, based off of dreaming and stuff. And I, I like, I'd kind of had all these fantasies that I'd write about and wasn't really going out and experiencing a whole lot. Just mm-hmm. kind of trying to live my life out through this music. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it kind of like, I felt a little trapped by a location. Like I felt like maybe there wasn't many other people in this city that were making the type of music that I wanted to make. Right. And uh, so I kind of felt like, despite the fact that I'm in the middle of, a lot of land it's kind of like dead in the water right? ah, ah. so I, I guess I kind of just felt a little hopeless in that way and um, so whether it be by like location or, or whatever um, that's kind of what influenced it and uh, I think that yeah, I just kind of I decided on it pretty early on I just liked the title and originally I had a few other titles in mind and I think the fact that I considered it and it wouldn't have been what I would have maybe normally chosen to be a title for something I was doing kind of attra- I was attracted to it that way so that was the same thing with like grenades in a glass house. I find yeah. you know it was something that I, I heard somebody say. I remember the day you picked that album name. I was like, "This is it," and I was like, "Oh yeah, that, that's oh, yeah, pretty like, fucking yes. neato." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Done. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Neato. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> originally it was supposed to be called Joseph, who named yeah. after uh, a family member of mine that had that had uh, passed. But um, you know, the the further mm-hmm. I got along, like actually making the album, it was just like. This is it. Like yeah. this is this is the identity of this, and that's one of the reasons why I love your album title so much is because it reminds me of like mine. Yeah, it was like it's it's one of those things where it's like nobody is really gonna know what this means except you. Yeah, and but they just have to deal with it. Like nobody, I get asked all the time, like what is grenades in the glass house? Like yeah. what the hell does that mean? Right, and I love that. Um, another good example is like Data Banks. He had yes. a mixtape called Roy Meets World. Right, yeah. and everyone's yeah. like, you know, what what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, yeah. I think one of, yeah one of my favorite things is when like ma- I like making an album like that and like when the title isn't anything from a song or yeah. isn't, isn't a particular lyric or anything oh, yeah. it's just it opens so many so much more mystery or whatever and mm-hmm. even just like I like 
studying artists I like and seeing what album titles they've picked and especially when they pick something that I think is like really stupid. I like really <laughs> living with it for a while and going and trying to understand why they picked it. Yeah. And then eventually appreciating it. Like like Jesus. Uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty dumb at first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's like my favorite album of all time. So, <laughs> so yeah, it worked yeah. out, I guess, for him. But. No, my name is Jeffrey. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I haven't listened to that yet, though, I don't think. But. No, I, I'm, I'm not a Young Thug fan. No, I, I think he's like, He's one of those guys that I feel like